Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be speaking about one of the most original blockbusters of all time as episode one of the classics. This is one of the most thrilling adventures and also one of the most horrifying movies to come out of Steven Spielberg. Um, this is the first blockbuster movie of all time. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by me. We got merch, and if you want to check it out, link is in the description. The score is blasting at full volume, and the camera is at the POV of the shark. Um, though we don't exactly know that yet, as it goes through seaweed. opening is also unbelievably hooking. There, um, there is a party going on on the beach and a person named Chrissy goes out and gets eaten by the shark. Lieutenant Martin Brody is also given a great introduction into the story with a, with a family of four. Um, he also go, works as a police officer, and he is investigating the case of Chrissy when we find out that the person following her lives in Hartford. I swear to God, I hate Hartford with a burning passion. You stupid state of Connecticut, I'm going to- Then, we, get, we finally get the plot in this amazingly shot scene that was mirrored in Stranger Things of a typewriter um, giving the probable cause of death. We learn a couple more things, like the mayor is a huge douchebag who wants to bl give, give the blind eye to everything that's been going on, and how they live on Amity Island, a beach town, and primarily a beach town. That's how they make their money. You also quickly notice the pacing is very fast. There are a lot of quick cuts in the first half. It's, it slows down a lot in the second half and in the last third of the movie, but but in the first half you get you get a lot of like quick paced cuts to tell you to give you the exposition of the story. A great thing that Jaws does is it builds up perfect suspense. There is a scene where a kid is eaten by a shark, um, and you the entire time that the blood is streaming into the water, there's just this moment of oh. At the town meeting, we meet Quint, probably the coolest and best character in this story. He is just great. He is a great character, and I'll talk more about him later. I don't want no volunteers. I don't want no mates. There's too many captains on this island. $10,000 for me by myself. For that, you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. So we have a great scene of two people disobeying the the beach law and going uh and trying to f get the shark themselves um and uh they build up and i was gonna make a joke about this scene because it's a, a deck moving really fast towards a person but there's just some great suspense in this scene i mean listen to the soundtrack again Oh yeah, that's Hooper. <laughs> They're all gonna die. So we have the first autopsy of this story. Yeah, I said the first. Uh, in which we we try to find Chrissy's probable cause of death. Hooper, a, sci a, a shark scientist, immediately figures out that this is no boating accident. This was a shark attack. Um, then, 
we go to the shore and they have caught a shark and, and it's dead and, and the shark is dead. We did it. No, no he didn't. It's a tiger shark, not a great white. The shark that was killed is not the shark that killed the child in Chrissy. Can we just admire the score of this movie for a moment? Holy shit. Like, John Williams, like, pours his heart into everything he does from all, in all of his movies. He, he pours his heart into everything. But, I mean, the Jaws score is just so famous because it's so good. When Brody and Hooper go out on a boat to find Jaws, they uh, a head popped out of this boat. That still scares me to this day. I don't know why I mentioned that. I also really like the suspense of not showing the shark at all until the midway point. Um, let me just clear it up. A lot of people think that the first scene that we see the shark is this scene. No, 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 it's this scene. The whole 4th of the July scene is a very well done scene. Another child dies uh, because, a, because uh, the shark is, has a fake out routine and goes, to, um, and goes to the pond. <laughs> Skipping a lot of stuff. Cooper, Brody, and Quint board the orca to finally kill Jaws. Even if I were to make one of the most minor story changes to Jaws, I think it would that be that Hooper, Brody, and Quint all started having a lot of fighting with each other, and at that and at the point that they have to battle with the shark, they just can't, and they all die. I like seeing the main characters die. I also think that Quint's backstory is actually very, very well done. His story is that he was on the USS Indianapolis de delivering the bomb to Hiro. Um. After they're all laughing and having fun and having a wonderful time, we actually get a great juxtaposition uh, by going, by zooming out uh, of the boat and seeing that the barrel that is tied to Jaws is, is right there. Jaws is most famous for the shark. In fact, um, mainly because of the marketing, like the the shark trying going to eat that woman, um, but but it only actually has about four minutes of screen time. It's really interesting. They spent like millions of dollars on this on this like animatronic shark, and they and then they just used him for four minutes. And I think that is really like just. Steven Spielberg being a Sigma male. Quint dies, and I think that that's actually pretty powerful because, you know, he escaped and he was so scared all those years ago with all his friends dying in the water with him on the USS Indianapolis just to get eaten by another shark. I think it's really powerful to have him, f to have him be um, to have him die the way he does because it's just, th there's just an unjust ability of it. Another very powerful and clever death is Jaws himself. I really enjoyed watching Jaws die because he has been terrorizing Amity Island this whole movie, but also because the tactic he uses is very interesting. It reminds me of Huey versus Translucent from, uh, from The Boys. Uh, we're blowing up Jaws from the inside on a sinking ship. I think that is actually a very cool, uh, I think it's a really cool death. <laughs> I think in the end, Steven Spielberg's vision for this movie was fulfilled completely. I think that there was a, there was a good idea that all it needed was good execution, and we got the good execution. So I can't really complain about Jaws because it's just so solid. Now, on to the numbers. So, first off we have the cinematography. I think this cinematography has some absolutely wonderful shots. 
there are some times where it feels a little stiff, but there are a lot of really good shots. So, cinematography, 9 out of 10. Soundtrack, 10s all across the board. I don't think I need to explain myself for this one. The, the Jaws soundtrack is very, very good. Acting, 8 out of 10. I think there were some really, really strong actors in this movie, um, and they really pulled it off. I can't be too harsh on this next one, but effects, 7 out of 10. I think the effects were really good. It was very practical, and I enjoyed I enjoyed them a lot, but yes, 7 out of 10. And story, 9 out of 10. I think the story was very, very good. So overall, I'm going to give Jaws 1975 an 8 out of 10. I really liked it. What the...